Here we have our rather unorthodox Zerg player trying something new, seeing if it works. It didn't quite work out. We'll see if he plays a little bit more standard this game. He is. Coca. It's an ex-Coca. Going with the uh, Zebra keyboard layout. Black and white. And here's our blue Terran player. Basically just having to defend, getting a lot of successful drops in on this corner last game. Yeah, MVP yeah that, that really did. That constant harassment with drops really ended up clinching the game for him. Yeah. Eventually, he killed off so many drones. He had double the drones of Coca last time. Big thanks to LG Cinema 3D, Intel, and G-Skill. Now, with uh, Coca, I'm kind of curious to see if he's actually going to go for the fast circling speed first this game or go for a hatchery. Um, a lot of Zerg players, the reason they go for the hatchery first is because if you get enough drones out, you have a great economy going. You can do pretty well defending against a lot of the two racks pressure that you see some players doing. And, uh, you know, you could just have two bases going really fast and then from there, you know, do whatever you want. So he is going to go hatch first. Hatchery first on... Hatchery on 14, uh, actually, so very fast hatchery. Yeah, pretty fast. Hmm. Going to go right back up, and uh, so he's going to have the... It's kind of interesting. He's going to have the... Maybe, maybe so he can get the creep out earlier, so he can have a spine crawler down in case of a rush or something. I'm not sure. And spawning pool on 14 as well, so also... And, you know, that kind of tells me that he's worried about aggression from Coca. A lot of times, players will get that stuff earlier, you know, the hatchery in the pool, just because they're worried about the aggression from Marines. I mean, that two racks that we saw done earlier today was pretty effective. Yeah. MVP certainly made it work, so, you know, Noblesse was watching from the audience, so maybe he's a little bit worried about, um, or rather, Coco was watching, he's worried about Noblesse doing the same thing. But, I don't know, I, I kind of like going for the later hatchery just because you have more drones out. I feel like you can defend well enough with those drones. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the norm as well. Yeah. It may be that Coca has been kind of practicing against different things and wanted to make sure that he didn't lose to anything ridiculous. He is down a game, so it does make sense he wants to play it a little bit safer. No bless. Make sure he doesn't it. die to a you know a proxy racks or a hidden hidden second barracks or anything like that. Yep. Now he did get his gas right after the uh, spawning pool as well, so he will be going again for that fast circling speed most likely. Yeah, and a bunker down at the front. He's yep. actually going to have factory. And yep, one gas factory and two factory. factories. Okay, so I would huh. guess this is probably going to be Blue Flame Hellions again. The reason being, Hellions, of course, don't cost gas, so you can save up enough gas while the second factory is building to be able to start Blue Flame right away when that second factory finishes, or when the tech lab finishes, rather. Uh, uh, no tech lab on that factory. Uh, reactor right on now. the factory, actually. Okay. Interesting. That is, that is interesting. And the Zergling... Denied. It's denied. That's right. Until they invent... A jump upgrade for Zergling. And so that's interesting. The Zergling both. actually was able to spot the reactor, yep. but he doesn't know what it's attached to. That's right. Could be a barracks. Could be a factory. Yeah, and that's actually going to might worry him a little bit. Yeah, if it's, a, if it's a second barracks with a reactor, that would be cause for concern. But we'll have to wait and see. Is it a tech lab going down on that reactor Whoa. as well? Whoa, very bizarre. Whoa, All right. double reactor factories. Now, for Coca, for now, playing very standard. Injecting larva, you know, getting his drones up, getting some zerglings out, getting a spine crawler. And I think we've got Noblesse faking like he's going to expand with that bunker, but in reality... Yeah, but, I, you know, he might... That's what I would assume as a zerg if I saw that bunker and not a ton yep. of marines. But he did see that reactor. Yeah. So he might suspect, oh, and he pokes in with the Overlord and spots the, the Hellion at the edge of the base. Okay. He actually didn't hide his Hellions in the right now, place. Did he see both factories, though? He didn't see the factories, okay. but he saw a Hellion. So now, he might be thinking, okay, I saw a reactor, I saw a Hellion. Oh, it's an all-in. Oh, it's an all-in attack. Noblesse Here we go. is up a game and trying to finish it off with one big attack. There are Banelings morphing right now, though, which are actually going to be very good against this attack. Banelings see the Hellions. Banelings actually do real good damage against Hellions. Yep. And Marines. He's got two more spine crawlers. Are they going to be up? They're going to be up just at the last possible moment. It's going to come down to control. The SCVs are going to buffer. I think we're going to see a lot of SCVs dying oh, to Banelings. Oh, there's the Banelings. Oh. careful. Nice, nice dodge with the Baneling. Only two left right now. Gets a good hit off, with damaging a lot of Marines crawlers, and SCVs. Though. 
But there Looks are a ton like. of Hellions. And if he can just block for those Spine Crawlers, well, he's going to be in good shape. And there they go in. Trying to... You cannot. You just cannot roast SCVs. Spine Crawlers. Actually heading back to the base of Noble S. They're like, all right, we don't want to go all in against that. We yeah. want to go back to work. So no, that's a good move. It's a reverse all in. You don't often see all ins reverse like that, but... It's a, it's a very smart <laughs> move. It's, yeah. um, because with all those banelings there and the spine crawlers, he knew that he wasn't going to be able to kill everything off. He doesn't have stim. He's on creep. He's got good creep spread, so the banelings will be able to catch up. Um, so he's just going to harass with the Hellions. And I don't think he's even making any more Hellions. No, he's just going to use those Hellions to keep pressure up, make sure that Coca stays scared, and then try to get back in the game in the longer sense because he's really behind on Harvesters right now, 43 to 25. I'm kind of curious about the timings with the two reactors on the factories. If he would have gone Tech Lab on the first one, got Blue Flame. I'm kind of curious if uh, he would have had less Hellions that did more damage, if that would have made a difference. But who knows? Question for the ages. Command Center going down for Noble S. He's going to be expanding now. Now that his all in didn't really uh, didn't really work. It was only a part in, half in. A part in. Pardon? Yeah. Pardon me. My SCVs are not going to be useful at all. So they're going to go back to work. Well, Blair he is up a game, Coca. so maybe he just matched the bet of Coca. Could Didn't be. have to go in, all in to, to match Coca's bet. To use a, another Coca term, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, Coca's in good shape. He's got pretty much full drones at these two bases right now. He, he can probably stop producing drones at the moment and, and be perfectly fine and just start powering units. I don't know if he knows how much ahead he is. Actually, he probably does know. Noblesse is trying to make an expansion, and the longer this game goes, the more the easier it will be for Noblesse to catch up because he'll be able to use mules and such. I kind of feel like maybe Coca should do something off these two bases. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. It's going to be really, really tough for Coca to break Noblesse right now. Getting yep. macro hatch in his macro main. Macro hatch well. in his main. That, that does lead me to believe that he's thinking about doing a two base like good attack. Yeah. But the only problem is Siege Mode is going to be finished. He is getting a Spire as well. So even if he does decide to do that attack, it's going to be pretty difficult to make it work. SCV is coming out again, not to go all in this time. Just conga lining themselves down to the mineral line. And uh, third base right now going up for oh, Coca. Okay. So it looks like maybe just his uh, macro slipping a little bit. He does have quite a few minerals. He's up around 600 right now. So, and, and we do see a lot of pro players getting those macro hatches, you know. Yeah, especially, and we see him going for a lot of Zerglings, and especially if you're producing cheap things like Zerglings, it's much more difficult to spend your money unless you have that extra hatchery. And, and that might have been why you put down the extra hatchery. It's like, oh man, yep. I'm not spending my money enough. Armory um, going down for Noblesse as well, so he has oh. enough factories where he could go kind of biomech right now. Spire pops, and he had enough gas and money in the bank. That might have been why he was saving up to build oh. nine mutalisks immediately. You're absolutely right. Mainly getting a little bit singed before pulling back. And that's going to be a lot of mutas for Noblesse to deal with. His first store is on the way, but he doesn't have a ton of Marines out quite yet. Although that's probably going to change because he does have a couple reactor barracks. Yeah, only 15 Marines right now. Yep, and those mutalisks are not going to have any of those Hellions staying alive. A couple with five hit points. They're going to come out as well. And he's going to try and trap them. He does get a few of those Hellions very quickly and turns and takes a shot but loses another one. And now here comes need the to be careful. Brass. Here come the Mutas. And the Thor pops out just in time. Wow. Doing a little bit of damage. Only hitting one Muta. That was some magical Thor nice. timing. Yeah. He's like hiding in the factory. He's like, whoa. Aha. <laughs> exactly. And the Mutas were like, oh, oh. Oh dear, you startled me. It's scary. I mean, when a Thor comes out of nowhere, it's kind of like, how does that happen? Thor comes out of nowhere and yeah. gets a couple volleys and nearly kills you? That's startling. It is. And these mutas are going to get shut down again by those Marines. Um, good choice to go with the mutas. Put some pressure on the Terran while you get your third base droned up. But it okay. doesn't look like he's actually going to get too much damage done with them. Coca's pretty far ahead in the food right now, too. 149 oh, yeah. to 101. Yeah, and has droned up to 70 harvesters now. Yeah. So he's looking good. I has, mean, a, uh, has an over 30 harvester lead at this point. Right now, what a lot of Zerg players would do is just wait for the Terran to move out, and then move in and uh, get the nice flank with Zerglings, Banelings, Mutas, and crush the army and go for the counterattack and win. Wow. Hellions still, still trying to Look at this. come around the back. He's crept up. 
uh, quick creep all the way out to the middle of the map. He's just kind of basically splitting the map, putting those spine crawlers there, patrolling with his mutalists to make sure Hellions can't get by. And he's just in a commanding both economic and strategic position. It is coming in to do some wrath. Nice. Yes, catching a tank. Very, very good. Tanks are the backbone of the of the Terran army. That's right. They keep you from dying to Banelings, and so keeping that count low means it's going to be longer until Noblesse moves out. And you know what? Noblesse, I don't see how he can take a third. He might just have to just back her off two bases and make one push and hopefully break Coca in one push. Yeah, this map is a little bit difficult to take your third on, as you can see. None of the thirds are really that close to the base. There is one out in front. Yeah, he but might then again, be able to get really that one open. there. Yeah, it's really wide open and exposed. And that's the difficulty there as well. is taking some shots, not really able to find a way to work in. Looks like Noblesse is going to move out. Wow. He's got a good amount of Thors. It's going to do well against the Mutalisks, but there's a huge amount of Banelings and Zerglings out right now. That is 109 Zerglings and 44 yeah. Banelings. He He's only back. made he made those nine Mutalisks at first, and not a single one more. He's just been powering the Zerglings and Banelings. He has a oh, huge the army. Overlord spots it too. And he's going to split up his forces to go for a flank when this attack happens. Nobles might be in some serious oh, trouble no. here. That Coming army up from two mighty. sides. The siege isn't up. And the Zerglings blowing in from everywhere. Banelings chasing those greens back to their own deaths. Doesn't even have to use the. Oh my gosh. Such an overpowering Nobles. Wow. Leaving the game. Being down 80 supply at the end there. Wow, that was a stomping. That was awesome. And that's yeah. that's what you can do when you get that far ahead, is just make a ton of everything. Yep. And just like a wave, like wave crashing down on the Terran army. Also, yep. caught him unseized. Yeah, absolutely. Caught him on siege. Well, when you have overlords all over the map like that, that's the really kind of the number one thing that helps you prepare for those Terran pushes. I mean, just taking the tower is not enough. You need to have overlords out. You need to have zerglings at the bases. And yeah, his next Coca really just played a standard solid game right now. He dealt with sort of the weirdness that started out. I mean, yeah. after that all-in didn't work, even though he didn't really lose a single and SCV, he was so far behind. And note, yeah. he poked in there, saw the reactor, saw the Hellion, Made three spine crawlers and zerglings yep. and held it off because he had that overlord in the right spot. So, yeah. again, uh, knowledge of what your opponent's doing, very, very important. Noblesse really tried to hide it, barely didn't hide it. So, uh, he was able to kind of figure out what was going on in time to get yeah. defenses up. And that's what led to his um, eventual stomping. And so, that mole trap brings us to game three. Game three. We're going to a game three. The winner of this game is going to go on to the round of eight into the up and down matches. The loser is going home to practice. Not out of code A, but still nobody wants to be out at this point either. The loser is going to go home, probably have some ice cream and feel yeah. better about himself Maybe first. Maybe some Korean barbecue. Practice tomorrow, I bet. Yeah. Not tonight. I wouldn't practice after Dep crushing defeat. Depends on the player sometimes. Sometimes the an player. angry player deals with it by going and playing a bunch. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I do know some people like that too. Yeah, and the last map is going to be Crevasse. Another Crevasse. large map, another very interesting map, four-player map. Um, Good ZVT map. Easy to take an expansion on. A lot easier to take an expansion and a third on, so we might see a little bit more macro-oriented uh, game. Well, it's a bigger map, so that's certainly possible. Uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult for Noblesse to put on the pressure from the early bunkers, things like that. But we'll have to wait and see. The game's going to start pretty soon. We're seeing the loading screen. Soon you will actually see the game screen. And then Moltrap and I will talk about it. We'll see who wins. Yes, we will. Yeah. I'm very much looking forward to this. Last game of the night. Don't go anywhere until it is over with. Uh, and actually, even when it's over with, don't go anywhere still. Still, you should stick around and see about what's coming up later on this week. Yeah, kind of digest the, the games. Anyway, we'll let's find out, find out who's going to take the third game and the series.